So, I was minding my business, scrolling memes on Twitter, when I came across this image here. Yes, that is exactly what you think it is. That is hundreds of worm eggs in the brain of a child who ate undercooked pork. Now, the patient obviously died, but if that wasn't horrifying enough, then there's also this image, which is the same parasite, tapeworms, except they actually hatched this time and are moving around under the skin in the hundreds. What a lovely thought to have, that there could be thousands of wriggling worms under your skin that you're oblivious to, all because you can't cook your meat correctly. Now this got me thinking, what other horrifying parasites are there that could be festering within me that I'm unaware of? Today we're going to be looking at and ranking different human parasites, we're going to be putting them in a tier list which is a little different from the normal ones, as we have four rankings and then a secondary condition. The secondary condition is just whether I would willingly contract the parasite for $100,000, but the parasite has to take its full effect before I can have it removed or treated. So no small ass in the comments can say that they'll take the mega brain AIDS parasite, but also the dewormer at the same time for $100,000. The rankings will go from no change, which is fairly straightforward, although I doubt many will be in this rank. Manageable change, which is for parasites that, although I wouldn't want, the symptoms slash effects aren't going to affect me too much. Next is horrifying, which, as the name implies, will be parasites that have very strong symptoms slash effects. And the final tier is krill my shelf, which, I'll let you guess what that means. Our first parasite is going to be Balamuthia mandrillaris. I said that and my furniture started floating, so I'll call it B mandrill for short. It's an amoeba that is found in soil and untreated water, and it can infect you through open wounds or through inhalation. This amoeba can cause granulomatous amoebic encephalitis, or gay for short, which if you didn't know is just, uh, how do I put this? Necrotizing abscesses in the brain like this. Yeah, you can see the entire right side is melting away, and this is all happening while the patient is alive, by the way. The symptoms of the disease include fatigue, fever, headaches, oh, and personality changes. I guess when half your brain is melting away, you might have a few changes in your cognition. The disease is hard to diagnose because it rapidly spreads with a pathogenesis of around weeks to months, meaning you're probably dead before you can get the necessary scans and appointments to diagnose this. It also has a 90% mortality rate, and, and even if you do manage to survive, your brain will be more similar to that of a 90-year-old with late-stage Alzheimer's than anyone your own age due to all the brain damage. Yeah, I'm going to have to pass on taking this for 100,000, and I'm also going to put this in the horrifying tier, as realistically, I wouldn't need to krill myself, as it would do it for me anyway. Our next parasite is the Kandiru fish, which is also known as the toothpick fish. Some of you may have already heard about this fish, but... For the uninitiated, this fish swims up the male urethra and due to its spiny and toothpick-like shape, it's almost impossible to take out and causes sharp pain to the groin region. Now if you ask me to think of an animal that should be wiped off the face of the earth, I'm probably going to put penis toothpick fish right at the top because what was the need to evolve this method of survival, hmm? They're basically penis mosquitoes that drink the blood of their hosts to survive and are normally found in the gills of fish where they drink their blood. They inhabit the rivers of the Amazon basin and locals in the region often tie ligatures around their manhood so that when they travel through rivers they don't allow any kandiru where the sun don't shine. Now some say that the kandiru in the urethra is a myth and that fluid dynamics wouldn't allow for them to actually make it there, but that just sounds like pro kandiru propaganda to me. And I think that being misled is worth the risk of potentially having to castrate myself, which is apparently what some locals did after getting the disease. Obviously, I'm not going to take the money and it's easily going into the krill my shelf tier. I don't think I have to expand on why. Acanthamoeba trophozoite is our next parasite and I'll just show you the image of what it does firstly to set the scene. Yep, that is indeed the eye and this parasite infects the cornea of the eye. It affects people who wear contact lenses and around 1 in 10,000 contact wearers will get the disease. I wear contacts sometimes and I think I slept with them in one time and now they float around at the back of my eye. Or I might just be crazy, because I'd wake up and realise that I slept with them in, and when I tried to take them out, they're not there anymore. Anyways, this parasite obviously affects your sight, and if left untreated, will eventually cause you to turn blind. But because of this, it's pretty easy to diagnose and treat. It can be treated with antiseptic eye drops, or in some cases, surgical removal and transplantation of new corneas. Now this one is a tough one, but... I think for 100,000, I'm taking the temporary blindness, and the 100,000 would easily pay for a cornea transplant if need be, as they only cost around 10k, so it's going into the manageable tier. Nagleria fowleri is probably one of the most scary parasites on this list because it has a 98% fatality rate, with a median time to kill of around 5 days. You contract it from swimming in fresh water as it travels up your nose and infects your central nervous system before travelling to your brain, 
and the method in which it kills you is by literally nibbling on your brain until it kills you. I'm not making this up by the way, it's called trogocytosis and it has unique proteins that can rip apart small molecules from your brain's outer cell membranes. The Roman baths in Bath, England were actually permanently closed because of this parasite, which sucks if you were wanting to Roman max, but having your brain eaten from the inside by an amoeba, dubbed the brain eating amoeba, might be enough to dissuade some of you. So next time you decide to jump in a river, remember that you might have just offered your brain up as a meal for whatever's hidden in the waters. Gonna put this one in horrifying because it's gonna kill me anyway, so potato potato, and no, I'm not taking the $100,000 for this. Okay, if that put you off swimming in rivers, this one's gonna put you off swimming in ponds. In fact, just avoid most bodies of waters if you'd like to live. So you know how sometimes people can get a polyp in their ass, that spongy raised cell mass that can sometimes turn into cancer? Yeah, well this parasite, Rhinosporidium seaberry, causes those same polyps in your throat. This is what they look like, and yeah, imagine trying to eat and you have this ass mound in your throat. Yes, I know polyps aren't exclusive to the intestines slash arse, but it's just funny if I admit that. The parasite is found in infected pond and soil water, and is mainly found in Sri Lanka slash India, so most of my viewers will probably be fine. The only way to remove it is surgically, and get this, it's also recurring, so every morning you have the possibility of waking up to more polyps in your throat slash nose. Easily krill my shelf tier, not gonna do it for the 100k either. Okay, this one around 11% of my US viewers actually already have. Yeah, you're riddled with disease, you flea bags. And don't think you're safe if you're not from the US, as around 30 to 60% of the globe have it. So realistically, we're all the flea bags. Well, not me, because you primarily get it from eating uncooked pork. So yeah, not happening to me. Although rarer, you can get it from cleaning cats' feces, which is why doctors don't recommend women to clean cat litter boxes when pregnant. Toxoplasma gondii is the parasite and its symptoms are kind of insane to be honest. Most people have the latent form of the disease and this form can cause an increased risk of schizophrenia and get this, increases the likelihood of women over 60 to commit endgame at a statistically significant rate. It also makes men more aggressive and cruel and has the opposite effect in women for some reason, which makes no sense, but I guess. It also increases your likelihood of being in a road traffic accident by 2.65 times, which I don't even know how this makes sense, but the study was recreated in Turkey and held up, so, you know, the next time you get a speeding ticket, just pull ye old, I have a parasite that causes me to crash excuse. Most people already have this and don't know that they have it, so I'm going to put it in the no change, as if I didn't tell you about it today, you wouldn't have maybe known ever. Also, I'll take the 100k as, although I've been in a road traffic accident, it wasn't my fault, but that's a story for another day. Okay, here's some quick fire ones. African trypanosomiasis causes African sleeping sickness, and it gives you ulcers and skin rashes at first, then invades your central nervous system, causing paralysis, seizures, and insomnia. The second stage can take around 30 to 300 days to develop, depending on the strain, and you can get the disease from tsetse flies, so yeah. Straight into horrifying tear and no I'm not taking paralysis and hallucinations for 100,000. That combination is literally hell. Imagine seeing a man in your room and you're paralysed like sleep paralysis but unlike sleep paralysis this happens 24-7. I know you guys love brain holes so here's some more. This is caused by pork tapeworm which you get by, you guessed it, eating undercooked slash infected pork. It's also infectious as it gets spread through human faecal matter so yeah. Even vegans aren't safe. You're at the mercy of pork eaters. The holes are caused by the formation of cysts which harden and die, leaving the empty space, obviously causing huge neurological damage and eventually death. And there's really no treatment, you kinda just have those holes forever. Easily horrifying, potentially krill my shelf, although I'd be mad if I ever got it because it means that someone didn't wash their hands after wiping and gave it to me through their fecal matter. Not for 100,000 either actually. Filarial worms sound horrible because, well, they are. They cause elephantiasis and are spread by a mosquito. Side note, we need to eradicate these guys because they're literally just annoying little gremlins that are really good for nothing, to be honest. Anyways, once the limbs have grown, you can't really treat it anymore and it's hard to diagnose, which is a great combination if you ask me. This one's going into the horrifying tier and no, for 100,000, I'm not turning into the elephant man. Okay, our last disease is something I really don't want and it's going into the Krill My Shelf tier immediately. 
It also has the most stupid name possible. It's called the Jigger Flea, and no, I'm not making this up. Look at what it does. Yep, take a moment to really burn that image into your eyes. And this is what they look like, these little freaks. They live under the sand and quite literally penetrate you, usually in your feet, until they're burrowed sufficiently, with a small orifice sticking out, allowing for the passage of excretions. They feed on blood vessels near the skin, and after maturing, the female begins to shit out thousands of eggs that fall to the ground. After about four weeks of this, the female then begins to die, and if left in the skin, leads to severe rotting and infection caused by Staphylococcus and Clostridium bacteria. The only method of treatment is surgically removing them, however, if you have a few hundred fleas in there shitting out eggs, you're probably better off just cutting the foot off. Maybe even the whole leg, just to be safe. Okay, here's one last image of them, just so you can sleep easier at night. And you don't even have to ask me about the 100k, it's already a no. But anyway, that's all we have for the Human Parasites tier list today. If you don't like the video, I'm going to put Jigger Fleas at the foot of your bed and Acanthamoeba Trophozoite on your pillow if you don't subscribe. But other than that, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video.